Hi everyone, it's me, Dan, from Two Guys in the Sound System. I have a podcast called Uncles and Fatherhood, and I have a new series I'm working on called All About Autism, and I will be talking to dads and hearing their stories and their experience of raising a son or daughter with autism. Um, I am very new to this disability. Um, I've been taking a class at the University of Kansas, um, and it's also medical school and a regular school as well. And um, and I just got the opportunity to, to take a, a semester at the University of Kansas for this class called LEND. And I wanted to do something like this to get another story or a series out there for Uncles and Fatherhood, my podcast. Um, I normally do so many cool stories on that podcast and mostly about dads and um, learning about um, their kids and stuff like that. And I wanted to do something different. So that's why I started All About Autism. And I will have maybe six episodes or more if I can do more. Um, let me see how six episodes will do. Um, and uh, I'll let you know. But this is the first episode that I did with a um, family friend. Um, his name is Sean Brooks. And here's the interview I did with him. Oh, hey, Daniel. Hi, Sean. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right. Um, are you uh, um, available to do some questions with me? Yeah, Maisie just got home, so this is a good time. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to. Okay, cool. How would what by how how would you like to do it? Or you just want to do it over the phone? Yeah, or, you're on the phone or, already. Or what would you like to do? Yeah, you're on the phone. So you're re I'm recording you already. So. Oh, you already started recording. Okay, no yeah. problem. Yeah. Um. Okay. The first question I have for you is: Can you tell me a little about yourself? You, you don't I'll have to go what, all the way. I'll be I'll, I'll I'll be happy to just tell you. Uh, so. I uh, born in Atlanta, but uh, moved to Kansas City when I was a young child. So I've pretty much grown up here in Kansas City, been here all my life. Um, went to Shawnee Mission Northwest High School. After that, went to KU. Um, while I was at KU, that's where uh, I met a lot of the friends still have to this day. Uh, one of which, of course, being your brother-in-law and also your sister. And uh, after college, I... Um, I had a business partnership that uh, went south on me in the car business, kind of did some reevaluation of my life, went back to my uh, baseline of wanting to be a full-time firefighter, so got into that business, and uh, yeah, then was able to meet my wife, Robin, uh, through uh, another firefighter at his wedding, and been together for 16 years, married for 14 at this point, and uh, we had a uh, our daughter Maisie uh, came into our lives uh, 11 years ago, and then our son Brody uh, 10 years ago. So here we are now. Um, Robin is a uh, social worker, uh, clinical social worker, working at uh, Overland Park Regional currently, and uh, I'm a firefighter for the Olathe Fire Department. That's awesome. <laughs> That's very awesome. Did you did you ever um, want to do something that did you want to do like that when you were in high school? You... So, <laughs> good question. Um, I started uh, volunteering actually as a firefighter when I was still a senior in high school. Um, honestly, it's something just kind of fun to do. Kind of a, a gentleman that was like a second dad to me. Uh, he was a uh, 
he was a volunteer firefighter. I got to know some of the guys through that. Um, and I just kind of got on uh, doing that, like I say, when I was a senior in high school, just kind of as something I just thought would be entertaining. Um, I actually really, really enjoyed um, film editing. Uh, I, I love about every aspect of that. thought that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life was uh, all set to go um, in the middle of the application and approval process with uh, – with uh, USC, um, had done a couple interviews with uh, with admissions directors and alumni here in Kansas City, um, and uh, was planning on uh, going to USC for film school. And uh, ran a call one day that nothing really that that big or important, and especially since I was so new at it, I really didn't do a whole lot except for the ladder. But we had a gentleman that uh, fell from a uh, second story roof onto a first story covered patio. Uh, probably dislocated his hip, broke his hip, something of that nature. I honestly don't remember. It's been a while ago now. But uh, um, after that call was done, a lady came up and was kind enough to say thank you and shook our hands. And then before September 11th, uh, 2001, you know, being a firefighter, uh, you didn't get a whole lot of people that said thank you to you too much. And I don't know what it was about that day, but it kind of just changed my perspective. And uh, uh, the next day I dropped everything with USC and uh, – yeah, kind of took a different path in life and uh, went off to KU and remained at KU for uh, for my five years. And, uh, yeah, that's what's led me to today and as far as career-wise. What inspired you to be a dad? <laughs> you know, that's, that's a good question. Um, you know, probably, probably my own... Uh, probably my own parents, you know, in the way that I was raised, I was raised, I was an only child. Um, but, um, you know, the amount of time and dedication that my parents put into me and putting me, um, uh, you know, kind of first in a whole lot of things in life. Um, that probably is what I would say probably what inspired me, but, uh, to really pinpoint, it, um, outside of just wanting to become one, I think a lot, you know, a lot of people naturally just want to, uh, want to become parents. Um, that's probably, I'd probably have to attribute it to my, uh, to my parents themselves. What's a day in the life as a dad for you? Well, every day is usually a little bit different. Um, you know, like, uh, so today, you know, we could just take today as an example. Uh, I got a shift this morning, um, got home by the time I get home, Robin's already, gotten the kids ready for school, gotten them off of school, and she's already left for work by the time I even get home. So, you know, do stuff, some a few things here and there around the house, kind of try to relax. Um, and then, like, Maisie just got home from school, and, uh, um, you know, just making sure she gets off the bus, she gets what she needs when she comes home. Uh, Brody will walk himself home from uh, elementary school here in just a little bit. And, uh, yeah, then tonight it would just be uh, – a lot of what we do, I like kind of is maybe what we're driving. The point of this is a lot of the, what we do is kind of centered around what our kids are needing day in and day out. And, you know, so here in a little while, I'll be, we'll be driving around to pick up a birthday present for Brody that's going to a birthday party tonight. And yeah, that's my normal day is, uh, it's either 24 hours of work usually, or it's, uh, 24 hours here at the house. So <laughs> every day is a little bit different. Tell me how you found out your um your child was on the autism spectrum sure um so Maisie um we we knew something relatively early on um but of course we didn't know exactly what um you know as far as as far as parenting or looking for early signs and things uh Maisie was our first child um we were uh, we were extremely fortunate enough to uh, to be able to adopt Maisie at birth, and uh, um, 20 minutes after she was born, she was placed into Robin's arms, and she's been in, been with us ever since. Um, but we knew a little bit early on that maybe something was uh, was going on. Um, like I say, because we hadn't parented yet at that point, nor had I had younger siblings, neither had Robin. Uh, we didn't know exactly the telltale signs of things or what necessarily to look for or even kind of where par or normalcy, if you want to call it that, um, just where normal childhood development should be at certain critical points. Um, so we had the county get involved um, 
probably around 18 months old um, with some some county-based services. Um, they didn't necessarily indicate to us that uh, um, something was going on uh, spectrum-wise. We knew uh, some developmental delays, some global delays uh, were occurring. Um, then we got into uh, the school district takes over services at age three, so really at age two and a half is when they kind of step in and we start making that transition. And uh, eventually, kind of how we found out was uh, uh, we knew we just started seeing tendencies and everything else, and we were finally able to get into a uh, into a clinic uh, here in Kansas City for uh, for a professional diagnosis. Um, definitely, I would say that uh, most people kind of kind of think that it's it's pretty easy at times to I think people without going through the process believe that it's it's easy to get these diagnoses or there's a lot of communal support without a diagnosis and to be honest with you there's you know we can look back on it it's just a lot of unknowns a lot of things that you don't realize until you are able to look back on it and uh, yeah a lot of a lot of doors open for you after you officially have that diagnosis um it took us a while to get in to be seen but uh once we got uh, the day that diagnosis then um we were able to get some some additional services and uh, yeah we're just continuing down the pathway of uh of figuring things out um so that that's that's amazing because it's i've been doing this whole process of learning so much so many things about autism and at in blend and and it's just incredible that everybody's I don't know a lot of people with autism besides the people that I'm around at Best Buddy events, but... Yeah. And you know, the thing about autism is the spectrum, right? If most people, I think, even though a lot of people realize, say spectrum, you know, the autism spectrum, I don't think that a lot of people, including myself, without personally, you know, having this connection, I'm truly understood how wide of a real well spectrum it is, you know, how many different things can be um are encompassed within that you know is it it, 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 it it and i tell you what it is sometimes people absolutely surprise you um people that are on the autism spectrum and the and the the way that they interpret information the way that they process information it's just different you know and that's not a bad thing at all um just different but they're i'm sure we'll maybe get into some of that stuff here in a little bit but uh yeah it's people are uh no matter what it is, people are pretty amazing. Have you seen the show on Netflix? Uh, what show is that? The Spectrum. Uh, I can't say that I have. No, I'll have to look that one up. It's really good. <laughs> I'll have to. Yeah, yeah. No good tip, Daniel. I'll have to. I'll have to look that one up here. I'll, well, I'll the funny, the funny question for sure. The funny question about that is, I, well, you know, I'm not on the Spectrum, but I put my um. I did get in contact with them, and um, it's a dating show, kind of, with all people with that are on the spectrum. Oh, really? So I tr- I I um, send an application in. And, oh, wow! Good for you. And. Um, hopefully I'll know by February if I got onto the show or not. Well, good luck. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. Well, let's hope. I don't know. Let's see. I, I'm, I'm not really on the spectrum, but I mean, I still have a disability. So hopefully they have me for something. I don't know. Well, let's see how it'll work out. Good on you for at least throwing it in there and seeing, making sure that's the first step, man. Yeah. Um, do you have any? Does your kids have any, um, like nieces and nephews? <laughs> I only laugh because, unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, we're an extremely small family. Um, my, uh, I'm an only child, and, uh, my wife uh robin robin uh, has a brother who is uh we do not have any children or he doesn't have any children so uh no actually my 
my my kids do not have any nieces or nephews or any cousins and i don't have any nieces or nephews um so yeah Mm -hmm. that uh, you know wish wish they could wish they wish we had uh, a larger family but uh that just wasn't in the cards for us well they have tons of friends up at you know yeah you know um yeah i mean brody uh brody's got a good good core group of uh buddies there at school it's you know it's pretty good size and uh they're a great group you know Maze, um Maze, you know she has has her friends in her cbr cl- classroom at school and uh and has one best friend in particular and you know sometimes sometimes all you need is just one best friend but yeah it does it is nice to have lots of friends too yeah it's it i would i would say it's very tough finding friends it's, it's it is isn't it it's tough finding the ones that uh it's tough finding the real true friends isn't it yeah i had that situation when i was in when i was in school as well so you only know, can find one best friend or a couple but then they leave you for some something stupid um uh. but you still have a good one that's around good um What, did, what what was the biggest challenge raising a child with a with autism yeah um you know i thought about this one it's it's the biggest challenge the challenges have, have changed over the course of time and i think is is as Maisie's grown up and developed and as I've developed as a, as a parent and, you know, I'll say collectively for Robin and I both as parents. Um, but I, you know, the, I'd say my biggest challenge is trying to figure out the way that, the way that Mays, you know, processes information, displays emotions, uh, displays understanding, um, just kind of, you know, taking what I believe to be probably my norms and my, and the way that I, I typically do things and, and taking all that bias as much as possible out of it and being open to, to her way and, and, and how she does things and, um, and how this just going to be kind of to the beat of a different drum sometimes. And a lot of the time and that, uh, that's probably been the hardest thing for me overall is, uh, is being able to recognize when, when she's just going her own way and, and me having to be able to see that and to, uh, to, to accept that. And it doesn't mean that it's any, it's different. It's, it doesn't mean that the, the, the information is not the same or anything else, or the outcome is not gonna be the same. It's just different. Yeah. That's, uh, that's probably, you know, outside of my own self, uh, yeah, it's probably been my biggest challenge. Um, well, like, do you guys have a favorite activity you like to do together? Yeah, I mean, you know, so with, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I'll talk about both, uh, both Maisie and Brody. Uh, Brody, pretty easy. You know, it's pretty much sports. Like, favorite thing that I think we get to do together, we got to over the course of the last few seasons, is uh, is football. Um, you know, me uh, me trying to coach, uh, that's always interesting, but uh, him playing and uh, and us doing that stuff together, I, I, like, I like to think that for us, that's the, uh, that's the best. Um, for Maisie and I, um, you know, <laughs> we love to go get ice cream. Um, that's uh, it's one of her favorite things is to be able to, to 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 pick from like you know go to like a an orange leaf or something and be able to pick from different different uh, flavors of ice cream and different toppings and everything else and I don't know we've just been doing that for for a while now and uh, that's one of our uh, that's one of our favorite things to do just the just the two of us sometimes. Is that the only favorite ice cream place you like to go to? Is that the only one? Oh no! I mean, you know, wherever we can go and get get some ice cream, we will. I mean, sometimes it's 
it's as simple as like being able to see that there's a, uh, you know, Hey, there's a, there's a McDonald's or something there or a quick trip we can pop into. But, uh, um, you know, the, in any of those type of, uh, frozen yogurt places where they have multiple different types of things, whether that, like say, I, I don't know the other names of them other than orange leaf. I know we've been to them, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, of course you got, the you got the, uh, the really good ice cream places, uh, uh, Silas and Maddie's around here. We go to a lot, things like that. Well, there is one up by us and it's, well, it's, it's a dis, it's, uh, it's, I think it's, well, it's called the Golden Scoop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've been there. We've been there several, several, many times, actually. That's a great place, isn't it? Yeah. Very. The, the, uh, a couple, I think it was a couple of um, months ago, I went, went there with my citizens group and we had ice cream and it was nice. Well, Maisie, Maisie said she wants to work there when she gets older. She also said she wants to do work a bunch of different places too. But, uh, but uh, she, she loves that place. Combine, combine ice cream and and being able to work. She's all in. They're 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 um they're that's a nice um ice cream place. I like. There's a couple of ice cream places up around here, like Andy's yeah. and stuff. No, go ahead, Daniel. What was that last part? I think I, I, I cut out a little bit there. Oh, um, Andy's. Oh, yeah, yeah. They have some good ones, too. There's a lot of great places around here, for sure, you know? But I, I would say, you know, I'm glad you reminded me of the Golden Scoop. Um, no, that, that honestly, that place is great. I mean, just what they provide. And, and uh, I mean, of course, you can go get good <laughs> good things to eat there. But, uh, but what they're doing for the... Uh, for the community um is is it's it's just I, I i probably said it 10 times already but it is awesome what they do for the community do you have any tips for parents new parents or who <laughs> you, you know the only thing that i could any you know tip i could probably say is you know don't try not to be too hard on yourself that uh things things will work out but uh you know probably time you know i you'll never get time back and uh um if you have the ability especially when they're younger to uh, to spend as much time as possible by all means take it you know money will uh money can be earned later on and and you know you can always cut back on things but uh but overall you know, time is just something that you, you can never, ever get back. And uh, everybody told me the tips for them were always the same as what I'm pretty much saying right now is they'll grow up in a blink of an eye. And I'll tell you, the last 10 plus years have, have, have feel, I felt like they've absolutely flown by. That's, I mean, it's, it's incredible how kids grow up so fast. <laughs> It is. It is. It's, you know, it, and we can always get caught up in our own stuff. You know, we can get caught up in, in trying to succeed in in our own ways of life and our careers and everything else. But, uh, and, uh, you know, having things for yourself are are important, but, uh, but you definitely never going to get that time back. So it's, uh, that's the only thing, if I could give a tip, it would be if you had to folk, if you had the ability to, Spend more time, absolutely take it. Well, those are most of the questions um, I had for you. Okay. But um, but thanks for doing the um, interview with me. Absolutely. Well, you made it easy. Boy, that, that's 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 a that's a shorter list than I thought. There. Well, well thank I you, mean, Daniel. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, there was more, but. Some of the questions were when when the kids was when when they were younger, but yeah, mine 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 are a little bit older now. Yeah, that is true. So I mean, I kind of was trying to trying to find more questions that were all like all, autistic, but in there or autism, but I just 
the, uh, that was the only ones I could find. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, at any point in time, Daniel, if you uh, if you have any more questions or anything else, well, of course, you can give me a call. You know that at any point in time. I appreciate it, Daniel. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I hope you have a great rest of the night and a great weekend. Oh, you too. All right, Daniel. See you soon, buddy. See you later. All right. Bye. Bye.